very good, very, very good pillars to speak on. One is discipline and the second is integrity. I, I, I just love these two subjects, these two value systems. I want to share with the audience my, the definition of discipline as given by the Katha Upanishad. It goes back to the BC times, before Christ times, to back to our Indian civilization. And it is this which is now being brought in our national education policy, the NAP, which our Honorable Prime Minister has been so much talking about. And it is this what our children need to actually learn. And it says, the Katha Upanishad says, it's 1.3.6. Three, it says without discipline, there is no way we can control our mind or our senses. The Katha Upanishad explains as follows. Know the self, know the self, which is Atma, Atman, as the lord of the chariot and the body as the chariot. So the lord of the chariot is our soul and the body as the chariot. Know the intellect as the charioteer and the mind as the reins. The senses are the horses. He who has no understanding, whose mind is always unrestrained. His senses are out of control as wicked horses are for a charioteer. And they go all directions. He, however, who has understanding, whose mind is always restrained, his senses are under control as good horses are for a charity. This is what Katha Upanishads defined discipline way back in our Upanishads. So it goes back to our, our ancient civilization and our ancient learning, the Vedic learning, the Upanishad learning. But there's another traditional meaning of uh, discipline which is to behave yourself. We, can, we say, with the, so many times the parents would go back to their teachers, to the teachers and say, please discipline my child. This he, he or she is not listening to me, discipline. And there's a story which I'll narrate. And there was an artist uh, who was a very good friend of one person who was big of, a bit of a fool. So this artist, knowing that this friend of his is a, what, a bit of a fool, he kept, he liked him and he made him his friend. So this artist was a very good musician and used to play that music and he was that master. So the fool said, the fool said, um, why don't you let me uh, learn music? Let me, I can do the music. He says, what will you do? He said, I will discipline everybody with your stick. He did not know it was a, it was a, it was the drum, it was the master of the whole orchestra. He thought it was a stick to discipline those people who were doing the music. For some, that stick is, a dis uh, is also another meaning of discipline. So this is the traditional way which is linked with behavior and the fools don't understand what the larger meaning of discipline is. Let me now also give you the other areas. What does discipline do? When you are disciplined, which means when you go back to the Upanishad's definition, that when you have your five senses in a rain and you're the charioteer and you see how your five senses work, how you manage your time, how you observe yourself on what you see, what you hear, what you read, what you eat, what you taste, how you live. Your time management is like you're a, you're a charioteer of these five organs which are your the horses and you don't let them go astray. All those of us who got our five senses uh, reined in. It's, it says discipline helps you channelize your energy. It doesn't dissipate. It channelizes the energy. It also helps you develop an attitude. Now when you channelize your energy means if a student who's using, who's disciplined in academics will focus on education and not waste the time on gossiping away or gallivanting out. So it's channelizing the energy achieve a particular sport, like a sportsman, channelizing your energy to exercise, to practice, to go to the gym, etc. Secondly, it develops an attitude because once you're channelizing your energy towards positivity, you're developing an attitude of, 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 of achievement, positivity. There's nothing negative about it. You may have your fears of whether I win or no, but it's channelizing energy towards a positive attitude. 
and it cannot be done third thing is it increases your focus because then you have to be focused on what you wanting to do what you're focusing your energy on it certainly improves your mental health see those people who you've been hearing about he, who had issues of mental health in the recent past obviously lost out of discipline completely called personal discipline or character discipline or habit habit discipline or time discipline and then comes the it maintains peace in society when you're disciplined you walk on the on the pavement you wear a helmet while on the road you observe observe the traffic rules you don't spit you maintain social distances in covid times you keep yourself sanitized you don't get into the crowd it's all about discipline and that maintains peace in society in fact to my mind today's covid can be disappeared from this country within next 10 days if everybody decides that i will not be unclean i will wear a, a mask i will maintain a social distance even if i am invited for a gathering i will choose to go or not go and even if i have a wedding in the house i will not choose to invite people but i will maintain social distancing because these are different times the country of 1 billion will the covid will vanish when we do not understand every covid patient costs huge amount of cost on the national exchequer and india's instead of that treatment of covid we could have spent money on investment of infrastructure so it's all about discipline see look at the kind of savings the country would have if it is disciplined but remember it's not one billion discipline it's one at a time everybody has to wear a mask i can't wear a community mask you can't have a community mask so these are the benefits of being disciplined now you've given me another way of looking at is that discipline is a bridge between goals and accomplishment it's a bridge here's a goal and here's an accomplishment and when you're disciplined you connect the goal with the ac accomplishment but if you don't have the discipline goal is here and there is no accomplishment but you want to accomplish then you have to add it link it with discipline so that is how discipline is like a bridge between goals and accomplishment now let's let's look at integrity which is my very favorite uh thing we sometimes start feeling that integrity is only about financials no it's not that when you and i hire people now and we looking for men and women of integrity you not looking only at financial integrity because that's not tested yet and uh, one of the richest man who's a stock broker he yet said and the, he said the only question i ask is is he trustworthy and number 2 is he if he's not trustworthy which means he doesn't have integrity he says i don't want him i don't want him. even if he's very bright i don't want him because anyone without integrity all intelligence and all other qualities are sifa it doesn't matter to him. so integrity has a larger definition which we need to we must understand and according to me and according to the research it says integrity means being gracious it also means respectful it also means being trustworthy which i mentioned it also means be very hard working it also means being very self driven with a sense of responsibility it also means be very helpful and it is all of this and patience so that not the point here is integrity is integral to all these things integrity is just not financial so it's a it's a question of moral principles of right and wrong moral principles of right and wrong because remember it's there are certain uh, uh, times sometimes it's considered as conviction and you think that is what is right or wrong you had hitler who at at one time thought jews were coming in the way of the economic development or it caused the downfall of germany and look what he did what he did according to him according to him he was right but on moral principles he was a killer and the killer of the world so it's a moral principles of being right and wrong it also means in the end it it is doing the right things in all circumstances when no one is watching you it's good to be having integrity when somebody is watching you but you are obeying the traffic rules you are observing the laws you are observing proper discipline while no one is watching you 
to me to that this is the real definition of means of doing the right thing is all circumstances. Now people of integrity and discipline, what do they get? They get, they strengthen relationships. It, it gets you long, lifelong friends. It gets you lifelong relationships. It helps build self-awareness. That's important. It broadens your mind and it most of all keeps you happy. In the end, all the, all the purpose of all that you do, all that you want to do is that you want to be in the end happy and not be sad. So a, a person of discipline and a person of integrity most of all gets what we all yearn for in the end is to be happy, is to be healthy. They will be happier and they will be healthier people who observe discipline and integrity in their lives. If I look back at my own life, without I knowing that at the, at, the, at, at the age of 71, I'll be doing a webinar and I will define uh, the benefits of discipline and integrity. I did not know this. But I only knew one thing that this is the right way to live. It, to be, to, the, this is the right way to achieve. My te you introduced me as somebody who played tennis, somebody who had won tennis tournaments. It was, could not have been without discipline. It's like getting up at five in the morning and before I go to school, I go miles of running, my father on a mobile and I am running around, running to practice. And then I go back again to my classes and then I study hard and focus and I stay focused. And then I play tennis while using time between two periods in nothing but discipline. I used to go with a skirt on my, uh, in my college or my school because I wanted to, I wore shorts below it. So the moment I would have one period, while others would go to the canteen to eat a samosa, I would take my skirt off and go to the tennis court and play. So it is so much of personal discipline. Why? Because there was a focused attention that I would like to achieve something in my life which is more than along with the academics. So without this kind of discipline and focus, you don't, cannot achieve so, uh, so much in 24 hours because 24 hours is very, very limited. Similarly, integrity issues. What do you focus on? If you're wanting, what do you, uh, do you want by hook or crook, a trophy or by cheating or that you want to uh, go the unscrupulous way to earn money? No, I want to earn my way. Sports taught me that to win a trophy, you have to prepare, compete and deserve. I think that in the end and the time management again, I remember my playing days when while after finishing my tennis match, how I returned to my room to study for my classes which I was missing. While my other friends went to loud music and they came back home tired. While I would be mentally ready for my next day tournament and my match while others would get exhausted. While I would have generated energy, I would have trained myself and focused to win my next day and even study and take my exam when I came back next while the others would have dissipated their energy. At that time, they used to laugh at me. And then now they say, Kiran, I wish we would have also done what you did. But at that time, they were not listening to me. But at that time, personal discipline of making my choices was so very clear. There was so much of clarity that I knew why I'm doing what I do. I've had my 10 minute share. I now go back to you, Garima. We can take up more Q&As. What inspired you to become all? Also, an author. What is author? Writing is an expression, like poetry is an expression, art is an expression, music is an expression of the creativity within. It's an expression. Let me tell you, even a career is an expression. When you go out to work, it's a it's an expression yes. of being of your creativity within. You sometimes don't go to work to earn. You go to work to express yourself. So writing to me is an expression. It, it's a thought which gets poured out and that gets written. You may read it, you may not read it, doesn't matter. I may write my own blog not to publish it, but I write it to get it off my chest because I want to say it, I want to feel it. And then it's good to write it out because your thoughts change and then you can revisit it to say on such and such date, this is how I felt. So therefore my books, as I see that whole volume, it's about few volumes of as I see nothing but 
every piece is a thousand words of essays. When I was invited to events and I was fascinated to see how things are, I used to come and write and uh, uh, get over. And I also came through fortnightly columns I used to write for the Hindustan Times and the Tribune. So I compiled them. So for me, writing was a expression. So remember, writing, painting, uh, 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 music, uh, creativity, poetry, all is an art. It's an art. I think this is also learning for our students that they have to be very cautious. They have to be open to experiences, isn't it? They should look for new learnings. Oh, without this uh, doing, you will not learn. Book can inform you, but it is the doing which will experience you. And I've been exposed to very varied experiences in my childhood. Traveling across the length and breadth of the country as a teenager. Art, all-rounder activities in the college, athletics, drama, debates, NCC, declamations, athletics, competitive sports, camps. I did everything possible, adventure. So the more I did, the more I learned and the more all-rounder I became. Ma'am, my question is, being the first IPS woman officer, what were the challenges you faced and how did you overcome it? Look, I was enjoying it. The challenge was for others who didn't believe a woman could make it into the Indian police service. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was not a challenge. For me, personal challenge was, how do I live up to the, my own expectations? Because I had my own expectations of doing, serving people well. And when I used to find resources very inadequate, infrastructure very poor, it's like COVID times where our medical infrastructure has not been able to match the needs of the growing number of cases. And it angers you. It worries you. How do I meet the challenges of the people? Similarly, as a police officer, there were never many men to patrol, to check crimes against women, to check crimes of night. What do I do? Why police people think, oh, now she's a deputy commissioner of police. She will look after me. We can go to sleep. Oh, how could I go to sleep? I have no men on the job. job. Nobody's watching you. Nobody's securing you. I could not go to sleep. Believe me, I used to patrol five times at night. Every week, five times at night, I was out on the road trying to have Chokidari system in place. Hiring people, telling resident welfare stations, you give me Chokidars, you pay because I don't have a policeman. So I used to go out on the road and tell them, I'm awake, you also be awake. Give me Chokidar. Then villages would not give me Chokidar. I would go to villages and say, okay, give me young men. I would train them how to patrol at night. My challenge was, how do I meet the expectations of the people? I'm wearing a uniform. I'm supposed to keep them secure. But I can't tell them I don't have policemen. And I can't go to the government till you give me policemen. I cannot. I have to do with what I have. So my challenge was, how do I meet the my own needs of the uh, responsibility which was entrusted to me. And believe me, if I had four policemen in one police station, or sometimes were only four were left for night patrolling, I had 40 villages patrolling at night. And those 40, I used to meet at night, five nights a week. Because if I would not meet them, why would they do my job? So I involved them and I told them, I may have to meet you. I had to go and meet them to tell them you're not alone. I'm with you. So I had to meet my own expectations and the expectations of, and I'm telling you this has been a part of all of my government service. How do we meet the expectations of the people who are trusting you? Public service is a, is a work of trust. It's not just a job. It's taking people's trust. It's taking people's responsibility. It's not an ordinary job. Public service is not, it's not cushy. It's not a cushy, comfortable chair. Sorry, it's a big responsibility on your shoulders. When you take a public service job like this, it's a fulfillment of a very major responsibility. And the challenge before you is, where do you get your resources? Because the budgets will have to wait. Manpower recruitment will have to wait. You have to make do with what you have. That's been my challenge, not only in the beginning, till now. While people, of course, initially said, oh, uh, 
how will a woman succeed? Well, within very few months, they understood a woman can succeed. That they got the message. But I think the challenge is always you and your expectations of yourself. And give never up. give up. Live up to the trust of the people. Uh, so my question for you is, what is that one tip you would like to give to the youth so that we start looking at things very positively? Uh, always make better choices. When you have to, life is all about choices. Look, that's the difference between mankind and the animal kingdom. Animal kingdom doesn't have choices. It's a very structured life. You know, they, they have their own community and it's very few choices. They have no choice actually. The difference between human being and an animal is nature has gifted us with, with the discretion of choices. Animal world doesn't. So exercise your choices very carefully and value them. And you will be a product of your choice. Whatever you choose, you are a product of your choices. Personal life, professional life, reading habits, eating habits, living habits, time spending habits, all is your choice, not anybody else. And you will be reaping the rewards of it, nobody else. One general message for all our students who are here with us, if you can share that message with them. I already said that, that <clears throat> later, don't answer, I wish I'd done that when you were at this age. Say, I did it knowing that the time is flying. You want to read more, read more. You want to learn more IT, learn more IT. You want to do, uh, learn something extra, learn that now. Spend more time with family, do it now. Care for your parents, do it now. Don't regret later because it's not going to come back. You might, Because what you are here today, you were something else earlier. You were in a primary school. You were in the middle school. You were in the ninth standard, now you're in college. So remember, what you you are what you did earlier. So if you want to make it better, do it better now. Don't regret later. That because this time is not going to come back. That's how I look at my work every day. Why I give my everything to every single day, every single day, is because I know this day is not going to come back. I don't want to regret later. I wish I'd done that. I don't want to say I wish I'd done that. I say I'm happy I did it. Thank you so much, ma'am, for being so spontaneous and extremely affable with us. Each that you spoke today is surely an eye-opener for all of us present here, including me. And it's a moment of honor for us. And I want to take this opportunity to express our gratitude towards you for always making yourself available for Asian Education Group. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. We look forward to a very hearty and uh, continued association with you. Thank, Thank you. you.